This is the first case ever of the real men in black. And the crazy part is, there's actual proof of it. This story is so strange and bizarre that not even the men in black movies would do it justice. Before X-Files or Roswell, there was the Mari Island incident that started it all. I'm Flex Araujo and I like to talk about the big three M's, monsters, mysteries, and the macabre. If you're a like-minded individual, please join Monsters Matter and leave a like and review. Each like and review helps Han Solo enjoy his food from being too shooey. Now, get your coffee and enjoy today's story. It was June 21st, 1947. Harold Dahl liked to wake up nice and early and today was no different. It was still dark outside when he made himself a fresh cup of coffee. He then went downstairs to wake up his son Charles. You see, Harold and his son were going to the shore to get some work done and try to make some extra money. Charles eventually got up and got dressed. They had a family dog named Sparky. He would follow Charles everywhere. And while they were getting ready to get into the truck, Sparky gave Charles that puppy look and Charles couldn't resist. He asked his dad if it was okay to bring Sparky along. Harold didn't think it was the best idea, but thought what's the worst that could happen and said sure, but it was going to be Charles' responsibility to keep his eye on him. Charles was thrilled to bring his best friend along. He picked up Sparky and put him in the back of the truck. While on the way to the docks, Harold knew that this job was going to be too much for just two people. So they picked up two more crewmen on the docks. He had worked with them before and knew they were solid workers. All four of them and Sparky made their way to Maury Island in Harold's boat called the North Queen. Harold had worked very hard and saved up extra cash for years to be able to afford that boat, so it was no understatement to say the North Queen was his pride and joy. They finally get to the island and are about to dock, when suddenly, Harold sees something in the sky. He squints his eyes, trying to make out what it is. Once he sees it, he's baffled. He's never seen anything like it. Six huge metal discs were flying about 100 feet across from them. They're moving in all kinds of directions, right, left, up, down, and in a blink of an eye. Five of the UFOs start to get higher and higher, while one of them stays low. It looks like it's trying to get higher, but it's having a hard time. Smoke started to come out of the disc, and then a sound so loud that all four men had to cover their ears. The whole sky turned a bright red, and that disc that was struggling is completely gone. It had exploded into tiny little pieces. The debris is so hot, it looks and feels like lava, and it's flying everywhere. The men duck for cover, wrap their heads, and hope that they don't get hit by the debris. After a minute or two, it stops falling. Harold gets up and is frantically looking for his son. He finds him hiding under some loose wood, but Charles' right arm has been hit and is covered in third degree burns. Even through his pain, Charles is calling for Sparky. Charles tried to cover him when it happened, but Sparky was so scared he ran off. After looking all over the ship, he finally sees a pair of paws under a huge piece of lava-like material. Sparky had been hit, and unfortunately, he did not survive. Luckily, none of the other crewmen had been hit. Not knowing what to do, they head off, trying to get away from the scene as soon as they can. Before they get too far, Harold turns around and takes a photo of the incident. They get back to the shore and start brainstorming what they should do. They don't think authorities will believe them, and if they go to the press, they're going to be laughed out of the office. After all, it's the 1940s and UFOs were not as popular as they were today. Harold does have a best friend though, his supervisor, Fred Chrisman. See, they had not finished the job and he thought that it would be best to be honest and straightforward with Fred. Harold tells Fred that he would like to speak to him in his private office. He goes on to tell Fred the whole ordeal. Fred has known Harold for years, and Harold is one of the most honest people he knows. But just to top it off, Harold pulls out the photo he had taken, and Fred is in shock. He can't believe Harold has proof of this, wanting to look for himself. Fred goes to where the incident took place, and sure enough, pieces of strange aircraft are still there. He picks up a few pieces and keeps it for himself. Early the next day, Harold sees a black car pull up on his driveway. A man dressed in black with a black hat gets out. Worried who it might be, Harold steps outside and the man in black is quick and direct. He tells Harold that he's an agent of the government and that he must immediately get in his car and follow him. Harold, who has never been in trouble with the law and always respected authority, does what he's told and starts to follow the black car. 
they end up at a diner and sit down. The man in black doesn't ask any questions. He just takes off his hat and sits it right on the middle of the table and proceeds to tell Harold a super detailed account of what had happened the previous day. He tells Harold what he and his son were wearing, the time it happened and what had happened to Sparky. Harold is filled with anxiety. How did this man know all this? Before Harold can ask any questions, the man in black tells him that if he dare tells anyone, bad things would happen to himself and his family. The man in black then gets up and walks out of the diner. Scared and confused, Harold goes immediately to check on his son. He goes downstairs and knocks on his door, but no answer. He tells Charles to open the door now that it's very important. Still, no answer. Harold is not going to wait a second more and in one hard kick breaks the door down. When he goes inside, Charles is not there. Harold calls Charles' friends but no one knows where he is. Harold has a gut feeling that there is some sort of foul play involved. Everything in Harold's life was falling apart due to this incident. Weeks go by without any word, then suddenly, Harold gets a call in the middle of the night, it's his son Charles. He doesn't have the slightest idea how he got there, but he's all the way in Montana. Harold gets the first light he can and meets his son. Charles is still shaken up. He doesn't know what happened. All he remembers is suddenly feeling extremely tired, he goes to bed, when he wakes up, he's in the middle of the forest. And that is not even the worst of it. Charles cannot for the life of him remember the Mari Island incident. He doesn't remember the UFOs, he doesn't remember the explosion, heck, he doesn't even remember how his arm got burnt. It's as if someone went into his brain and erased that part of his memory. Harold doesn't care though, he's just happy his son is alive. That same night, Harold goes home and destroys all his evidence. He calls Fred and begs him to do the same. He will not be risking his family's life for anything, it's simply not worth it. While all this is going on, both the FBI and the Army have found out about the incident. They are both fine over jurisdiction. The FBI thinks that it might be the Soviets overflying in the country. For the sake of the country, they both end up working together on this case. The Army sends two of their best investigators to where the incident took place. While the two officers are there, they are grabbing loads of evidence. They were surprised at how much debris was left. They report back to J. Edgar Hoover himself. They tell him that there was definitely an explosion of some kind that had happened, and that quote, there might be something to this story. J. Edgar Hoover tells them to come back immediately once they're done. The two officers wrap up their investigation and get back on their B-25 plane and start to fly back. What happens next is still a mystery to this day. While on route, for reasons nobody knows, the B-25 suddenly explodes and starts to fire on the plane. Not able to put it out, the plane crashes into the forest, killing both officers in the process and destroying all the evidence they had. It's as if someone or something did not want the FBI or the Army to have any proof and made sure to destroy it by any means necessary. The FBI and Army are understandably very upset over the situation. But now, without any evidence and two dead officers, they need someone to blame. They go back to Harold and Fred and tell them both to say that the whole thing was a hoax, that they made the whole thing up for money and fame. Now, if they choose not to drop it, they were both going to be charged with fraud that resulted in the death of two officers. For Harold and Fred, it's not much of a choice, especially since Harold had already seen what they had the power to do. They start to tell everyone that it was just a hoax gone too far, that it was all just made up. Fast forward years later and Fred is sick and tired of living a lie and starts to tell the truth again. He tells UFO investigators and the world what really happened, how it was all real and how the government had threatened him and Harold. As for Harold, he dares not tell a soul what he really saw. His son Charles had been through enough and he would not put his family in danger anymore. So that's going to do it guys. If you guys like the story, please don't forget to help this channel by leaving a like and review. Every like and review helps Han Solo enjoy his food from being too chewy. Till next time.